Do you think that companies today are hearing from shareholders and investors who are actually talking to you individually when they come in and visit with you and say, hey, uh, you know, where are you on this, this, and this metric? Yes. Uh, I would say a subset of the shareholders, that is of a good concern, and that subset is growing. I think there's other shareholders, particularly those that only hold for a short time or maybe, you know, hedge funds. It's not really on their radar in terms of the questions they ask. But going back to Ac how old is Akamai now? I remember it from, is it 30 years old? How old is it? No, we're uh, 21 years 21. old as a public okay. company. As a public company, but I remember it long ago. And would you say that before you started emphasizing these things, it was an evil company? Or, or, or from, its, from its founding, from its founding, yeah. it was a good company with good intentions, treating customers right, treating employees right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, from well, the beginning. Was, did, you, did you look around at everybody else that you were with, and were a lot of those companies egregiously hurting customers and the environment and everything? Were you unique in being that? No, and to be honest, we didn't look around. We're starting a company. Yeah, but back like, then, do you, do you feel, I mean, do you think that the, the companies just started behaving like this in the last two years since Paul Tudor Jones made this list? Oh, no, of course not. Okay, so maybe even Quaker Oats, when it was founded in 1930, might have been a just company. Who uh, knows? I have no idea, but... You I have no well idea? Be, Don't yeah. you think a lot of the great American companies are probably pretty, pretty good acting companies I, to customers and clients? I would imagine. Okay. So then what are we doing now other than virtue signaling? No, I think it is good to put attention on it. Why? Uh, because I think it helps... Uh, executives and companies make better decisions, and I, you know, so they've been making bad decisions because no, they no, didn't. No. I think it okay. helps them, you know, be more cognizant mm. of it, and it, it brings the discussion out in the open. And I okay. think on well, balance, we go with that the, we've got to have the discussion. It might provide some cover with shareholders too. I think that's, that's well, or, and with well, with lawyers, with lawyers you. too. Well, I was going to ask you though. You look at your stock being up as much as it is. Uh -huh. How much do you think that's a result of your market share and financial success? relative to these other it, issues that are and what's a count, up what's a counterfactual if you, I, I would the say counterfactual if you weren't bogged down in the, all the virtue signals the stock is up but based Joe, on the financials but the he's, financials he's and the long term he's growth a big grown up he can derive talk. i think from how you treat your customers right. how you treat your so workers does, but it's hard to be a, a, a successful company if you're not doing those things right? i think so okay. over the long term absolutely okay um, the reason i asked about though these metrics is whether you think companies are going to start meaningfully try to say to themselves, when you actually look at the end of the year, for example, at the metrics that you think you need to hit, that these things are now going to be on a list in a different way. I, I, I think See, that's, they, the, that's the thing. I think they might have always been in the back of everyone's head, or at least I hope that they were. But the question now that I think is being asked is whether something has fundamentally changed. I think they, by the way, it genuinely has changed in, in Europe. I know there. I know that the boards actually sit around. And if you look at the decks that they're looking at, there are actual metrics on the piece of paper. Yeah. And so my question is, do you think that's ha coming coming to America? I think it's happening more. And literally, I look at a sheet of paper. Where are we on the environmental impact? Right. And we got four targets. We're hitting three. One's iffy. What's and the iffy one? Is you know how much of our uh, power is going to be from renewable resources. And our goal is 50%. We're close, but one of our uh, providers had an issue with a delay. That could end right. up being... The, uh, okay, I, was so kidding about the, I was kidding about the counterfactual, but if you end up spending uh, 60 70% more on non-competitive renewables, that, I don't know if the benefit that you're per, supposedly getting from the environment is worthwhile, the extra, the, the profit margin effect that you have for overpaying for energy that everybody else, that your competitors no, get to. Now, the other thing is that technology companies have these big, fat profit margins that allow you to think about all these things. If you're J.C. Penney or if you're a company that, that's trying to stay in business and God forbid, even might even have to rip. I know that, but the, the, you are in a fortunate position to be able to think of all these things right, and he, not just but struggling that's to. Why he can push the industry forward, and maybe some others can. Well, we'll yeah, see. And, it, and it makes a difference. Sometimes it may look like you're paying a little more for energy. I don't think that's true in the long run. And our customers, happened especially in Europe, happened in Germany, they happened, judge in, us, right? they happened in happened in Ireland. So it's now part of the business model. It's part of the model. Right. Yeah, it's part of okay. the part of the woke model.